What I'm going to do is go through and ask a little show of hands for true or false on all these ones here before I give you the answers. Okay? Many children with dyspraxia do indeed have attention problems. In fact, an enormous amount do, because around 50%, half, have attention problems of some kind. And pretty hefty 20% have been shown to have a full-blown ADHD, attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder, um, coinciding with it as well. So that's really... This is dyspraxia. It's slightly different. It is definitely different for dyslexia. Sorry, is it possible to define what is dyspraxia? I'm going to come along and talk. I'm going to mention that because I thought probably you wouldn't know. Perhaps I should say that first before I go into the next one. That might make it easier for you. As we define it. Um, and there are lots of people who define it slightly differently. It is a problem of poor motor coordination that is out of keeping with the child's other abilities and perhaps age as well. Now, there isn't an underlying problem like was shown for dyslexia, so it's defined in a much more practical sense in that the problems are such that they will interfere either with the child's academic progress, such as handwriting, or with the child's daily life, dressing, and so forth. Okay? Um, I'll add the other things as I go along. Dyspraxia cannot easily be spotted in preschoolers. It's actually extremely difficult to spot in preschoolers. And t- there are two main reasons for that. One is that some children nervous systems mature rather more slowly than others so you really don't know if, it, if the problem is due to immaturity or in fact to an underlying problem that's not going to go away and so is in fact what we would define and label as dyspraxia the other thing is that um, some children don't have the opportunity to practice some of the fine motor skills like fastening up their coats or painting or handling cutlery because their parents do it for them and so they haven't had the same opportunity so you don't know if it's because of that or again if there's a real underlying problem Um, and of course lots of young children perfectly normally might seem clumsy, eat with their fingers make a mess don't paint masterpieces and so on (laughs) Dyspraxia is certainly not usually outgrown by adolescents. I mean, the pattern may change, and and it certainly does, but the youngsters continue to have problems, and it's uh, really most unfortunate because if they've been recognised early on, which, again, is very often most unlikely to have been the case, but then if some of the problems might have been dealt with, and teachers and parents think they should be fine, they should be okay, they've had their help, they seem to be fine. But then other problems resurface as the complexities of what they're asked for in school increase. And then they start to struggle either at at GCSE level, and occasionally it doesn't resurface again till A level, but pretty sure it's going to be there. Um... There are very few effective treatments for dyspraxia, unfortunately, because um, there isn't a clear-cut underlying problem, as I've already said, as for dyslexia, so it's not like you can can train phonological awareness. Um, And the other thing is that children who have dyspraxia can show a very widely differing set of, of problems and difficulties. I mean, in the first place... Um, some children may have more of a problem with fine motor control but perfectly good gross motor control Um, gross motor control when it's sports may be uh, fine but handwriting terrible some children have problems of uh, visuospatial difficulties that many problems children do have that as well and that may often not be spotted but by no means all of the children have that kind of 
problem. Um, I think one thing I failed to mention when I was talking about the attention problems, and in fact somebody drew our attention to it and asked if, sorry, you, if we would um, mention it, and that is, the, as Val was talking about, co-occurrence of difficulties, and that is the co-occurrence of attention and dyspraxia. It occurs so often that... Um, a phrase has been coined to describe this and known as DAMP, Deficit of Attention and Motor Perception. It isn't necessarily a sort of syndrome, and I think some of the academics have disagreed exactly about that, but it's certainly true that these problems do co-occur frequently enough to give it a, a name, and I've certainly got a rather damp sun, <laughs> um, so I know it's true. <laughs> And Val knows it's true because she assessed him too. She had to, I think, have him stuck on her lap while she tried to do all the tests because otherwise he was he was off. And he was six, but he is now sixteen. I don't have him on my lap. <laughs> he's eighteen. He's eighteen. <laughs> Certainly not. Nor me. Okay. Um, so you're really needing to, going back to the treatments, it's pretty hopeless as some of these rather wackier treatments have, um, I hesitate to say that, have suggested that you might train up in a set of skills such as using wobble boards or whatever. That's not going to help them with their handwriting or their organisation or their comprehension where they have to look back and scan text or they're checking and these are some of the issues we want to pick up again later the practical skills that um, is really helpful for anyone with a child who has this kind of problem because you really need to be thinking of that over the years you know I'm still struggling away with my 18 year old he's largely doing it to himself of course but you know these things are still there